Hi, and welcome back to Engine Shop Joe. Tonight I wanted to take a look at the subtle differences between 2343 and 559 on the ISX 15 600 horse engine. And uh, the snapshots you're going to see are from a 600 horse ISX 15 and a four axle Peterbilt, and it's a heavy hauler. And uh, the, the unit's been fighting fuel pressure fuel pressure problems and we got it solved but that'll be a, a video in the future. Now uh, 2343 the actual description of that fault is the differential pressure in the fuel filter is greater than expected. If you remember the fuel pressure uh, if you remember the filter on the engine the fuel filter on the engine is a pressurized filter now there's no gauges that measure the pressure difference in there, but if that filter starts to restrict and the pressure drops going to the high pressure fuel pump head, less fuel will be metered because the ECM doesn't measure that pressure and then adjust metering accordingly. It assumes the pressure is between a low number and a high number and then it just meters and tries to uh, make the fuel pressure meet the commanded. So it tries to make the measured meet the commanded. Now fault code 559 is actually the fuel pressure in the rail is considerably less than the ECM wants it to be. So the measured is considerably less than commanded. Now remember the rail can have up to say uh, 39,000 on this engine. So when I say considerably less, I mean about 3,500 PSI or more differential between commanded and measured in the high pressure rail. So let's take a look at the snapshots, a couple slides from this and dig into it. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. The first thing I want us to look at here is the bottom half of this. Uh, the top half with the yellow bars is the audit trail. The bottom half where you have all the, the numerals on the right is part of the sensor snapshot, which when you make an ECM image with Insight with the key on and engine off, and that's the way you should do it, key on, engine off, you can check and see what the sensor values were. In this case, I was looking to see if the engine could maintain fuel pressure after you shut it off. We've already talked in other videos about that. The ISX uh, 15, ISX 12, ISX 119 should all be able to maintain fuel pressure when you shut them off. If yours doesn't and it's not logging faults, don't worry about it. Not a problem. This engine's having a problem with fuel pressure and so I was concerned about this. But if we take a look over to the right, halfway down, we will see that commanded at key off was 7252 and then measured was 5896. So typically it takes between 30 seconds and three or four minutes to make an image after you shut the engine off and key back on because you have to reconnect InSight that's usually 45 seconds. Then you got to go to the work order screen, create a new work order. So we can assume safely that the measured rail pressure was taken about a minute and a half after the engine was shut off. So it looks like it dropped about, oh, six, 1400 PSI. It's still maintaining 5896. So not bad. It's doing pretty good, in my opinion. So it passed this. Now let's look at the top section of this with all the yellow bars. Uh, the yellow bars are every time somebody did a reset on faults. If you look to the right, you can see the hours. So we had at the bottom, and it's uh, oldest is the bottom, newest is the top, 1,233 hours. Then we went to 718, 646, 267. And if you look to the left, we're doing diagnostic tests. Then 66 hours, we're doing injector barcode trim adjustments. It looks like maybe somebody 
put an injector in this because they thought that was part of their problem with the 559s. Don't know, I'm guessing, but I'll bet it's a good guess. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Let's start at the top with 2343, fuel filter differential data valid above normal operating range, least severe. So the engine does not measure the pressure in the filter on, that's on the engine. That filter has about 160 PSI sent to it by the gear pump. And this fault is assuming that if 160 is going in, we're probably down around 120 coming out. So when it says above normal operating range, it's talking about differential pressure. Ideally, if 160 goes in, 160 comes out. But if our differential pressure is above normal operating range, then that means we have less pressure coming out. Now, the maximum filter drop allowed across the filter is 15 PSI. So this is least severe level. I'm guessing that the software is assuming that it's somewhere between 15 and, say, 40 pounds difference. Don't know that. Just a guess. Probably wrong in this case. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I, what I wanted to look at, there was only one, one snapshot of this, so that's why first occurrence and last occurrence is the same. You can see we're commanding 35,799 but we could only build 34,604. So we were 1,100 PSI low for more than 15 seconds. And so we logged 2,343. Quickly, why did they come up with this fault? Because it wasn't any earlier calibrations. Well, many engines got towed in under warranty and all that was wrong with them was the fuel filter was plugged and they were logging 559s because the filter was really plugged. Because remember when these engines first came out, nobody really understood that the four micron filter on the engine was going to plug up fast if you got dirty fuel. And it took time for people to learn that. It took time for companies to start polishing their fuel. Polishing just means cleaning it, running it through filters before they put it in a big tank to take a lot of the um, minute dirt out of it so that the filters don't plug up. So Cummins decided to write fault code 2343 into the, into the calibrations. So if that fault came up, instead of somebody getting towed in for a 559, which could be all kinds of problems, fuel pump, uh, rail pop off, actuator, you name it, if it's a 2343 and they read this, they're going to go, oh, let's change fuel filters. And truthfully, probably half the time in the beginning, changing the fuel filter fixed the problem. 559s were gone and you were good to go. So that's why that happened. Now, uh, let's go down to the bottom half, 559, uh, injector me metering rail pressure data valid below normal operating range, moderately severe. Remember, the system waits at least 15 seconds before it'll log this fault. So you've got to have pretty, a pretty dramatic difference for 15 seconds. In this case, if you look at commanded and measured, uh, there were two different snapshots. And we're looking at about a 4,000 pound difference. And if you look down one line below the purple line, its engine speed was 1424. Accelerator pedal was 100%. They had their foot in it. They're pulling hard. Okay. Notice one says maximum fueling and one says maximum throttle. Maximum fueling, the load is 99% and maximum throttle, the load is 100%. So maximum fueling is there because that's all the ECM is going to give it. It's only 1%, but it's on, at, at that RPM, it's on the fueling curve where it's not going to give it any more, but it's starting to feel that snapshot D rate, that loss in fuel pressure. Remember when these faults log, that pulls the trigger and then the course of events happen after it. So in this snapshot, we haven't even seen where the engine has really time to start derating yet, but that's going to be coming in a few seconds. We just don't see it here. Okay, let's go on to the last slide.
Let's go down through the snapshot quickly. Uh, on the left, I've got some numerals, so I'll refer to the numeral and then what I'm talking about. Of course, one is the engine operating state, extremely important. Tells us uh, how the ECM is controlling the engine at the time. The Cummins ECMs run in defined operating states. It's not a fluid thinking like uh, we do when we go from one subject to another. It's basically jumping from set, this set of rules to that set of rules. Think of it that way. Engine speeds at 1400-ish in both snapshots. So we're in, a rate, we're in a place where you're allowed full pulling power, full fueling. Exhaust gas pressure is where I would expect to see it at that RPM at full throttle. Uh, we'll talk about full throttle in a minute. So those numbers look good. Fuel pressure commanded on the, in the, under the maximum fueling state. You see we're about 4,000 pounds off. And let's continue down that column. Uh, intake manifold air temperature is 130 degrees. Notice at number eight, OEM ambient air temperature. That's the temperature basically coming into the front of the turbo. Uh, uh, it's a little bit hotter than that, but uh, OEM ambient air temperature is measured in the mirror in this truck, the right-hand mirror. So that's what's going down the road. Uh, if you stuck your hand out the window, you'd be feeling 79 degrees. Uh, if you look uh, up back up at intake manifold temperature, it's gone through the turbo, got compressed, went through the charge air cooler, and we're down to 130 degrees going into the intake manifold. That's normal on a hard pull, and this was a hard pull. The guy's had his foot in it for a while. There's other numbers you can't see here that tell me that, like oil temperature, not so much water temperature because the fan and radiator are able to control that, but oil temperature was hotter than normal, so he was working it. Uh, intake manifold pressure, 76. That's that's very good for this engine, right where it should be. And percent of accelerator, number nine. He's got his foot buried in it because uh, he's going up that hill. It's probably loaded heavy. This is a four-axle tractor. Percent of load, 99%. Percent of load, think of that as uh, how much of the allowed torque at that RPM and that fueling state that percent of throttle, that boost, how much torque the of available, total available torque the engine's giving or uh, putting to the flywheel. So 99%, so it's right there. And the turbocharger, it's only closed 40%, which I can believe, uh, because we're, we're working hard and there's a, a, an enormous amount of exhaust flow now in cubic feet per minute. Uh, compressor intake air temperature is 83. Remember I told you that number eight is the temperature going down the road. It's measured in the mirror. Uh, number 13 is measured right inside the front of the turbo where the air comes in from the air filter. So uh, not too much of a difference there. And then turbocharger speeds 110,000. That's typical. Once you get over about 114,000, you'll start to see um, D rates because of turbo speed. And he's going 60 miles an hour. So let's pop over to the maximum throttle column and let's look at line seven, intake manifold pressure. Notice it went down about three um, PS, three inches of mercury, that'd be one and a half PSI. And if you look at the fuel pressure, we lost about another 800 to 900 pounds of fuel pressure. Uh, out of the measure, that's line five. And that's probably why we lost that uh, that boost. So this is how critical fuel pressure is because the injection on these things is precise. Uh, OEM ambient air temperature at that point was 61 and turbocharger compressor intake air was 64. So he may have just started up from sitting and everything was kind of cool uh, or it cooled off. There wasn't a lot of heat in the compressor housing. Turbo's 106,000 and um, he's bopping around at 60 miles an hour. So uh, that's our snapshot. And again, uh, snapshots are very important because those are the things that you look at 
when you're trying to figure out what happened, piece the puzzle together, what came first. Uh, I hope that this helped you and uh, le please leave comments and let me know if it does or doesn't. And thanks for joining me at Engine Shop Joe. Please subscribe. It helps and give me a thumbs up if you thought this was good. That helps too. Thanks and see you next time on Engine Shop Joe.